Hello and welcome to another tutorial on iPhone Obsessed. This one is going to cover what's known as class categories and this is going to dovetail in nicely into um, some more tutorials we're going to have on creating a universal app using Xcode. Um, and again, a universal app is an app that can be done for both uh, the iPhone and iPad and work very nicely for both of them. Um, we're going to cover again in this tutorial creating class categories and although they're not necessary for writing a universal app we're going to show you something I did to make making a universal app easier. Plus I'm sure you're going to look at what we're doing and come up with your own ideas of what you can use this for. By the way you can find this video on iPhone Obsessed and in the post that is there for it, you can also find a link to download the source code for this sample universal app with all the different things that are in it. And you can use that download for all the upcoming tutorials. I am using a class category in this case to make my life easier um, here in this block right here. Um, you'll notice I am creating a a view controller object, init with nib, and here I say UI device and proper nib file name for current device and I have home because it's my home page. So we're going to be looking at how I created this part here. And basically just by passing in my name here it comes up with the proper name whether it's for the iPad or the iPhone. So when I call this even though uh, proper nib file for a current device is not a UI device member, a normal member. Um, Objective-C allows you to add members to an existing class without subclassing um, and we're going to get into how you do that. You'll notice here I have two files UI device, my device type, um, the header file and then the implementation file, the .m file here. Um, I add you have to add your category file so you, you'll see that I have this here. Um, you'll notice here I've got interface UI device and then right here in parentheses I have my device type. Let's look really quick at um, another class. I'm going to look at my view controller classes. Just want you to see a difference here. You'll notice I didn't define anything on my home viewer controller here. It's a very basic generic thing. You'll notice um, I've got the name, colon, and then um, I'm subclassing off of UI view controller. You'll notice also there's no parentheses here. You'll also notice that there are squiggly brackets in this interface definition. Now let's go back to UI device, my device type, the header file. You'll notice that we don't have a superclass, no colon um, here. We're not subclassing. And then we got in parentheses this name, my device type. Now I named this file um, UI device, my device type, just to make it easy to find. I mean, I could have named these two files anything, but I figured I'd make it their class that I'm, I'm adding to, and then the category. So you think of a unique category name and since my device type kind of says what I'm trying to do that's what I came up with. You'll also notice that my device type is not in quotes so just take that into consideration. In addition you'll notice there are no squiggly brackets. Everything else works the same way as you would expect a header file to work but there's no squiggly brackets. If you have them in there you'll get an error. Um, then let's go to the implementation file, the .m file. You'll notice we're doing the import of uh, the same just like you'd normally do. But instead of just implementation UI device, um, let's look at, again, let's look at our view controller class, which is subclassing. We'll look at the implementation file. You'll notice I just have the name of my class and then I, I begin doing things. 
whereas on my um, class category, I add this. So UI device, of course, is an Apple class. So I can just add this, and then I basically am adding new functionality to Apple's existing class. And I have several methods here. You'll notice that because I have a plus instead of a minus at the beginning of each of these, um, that it is a class method, not a object instance method. Also, you'll notice that I have static variables here. When the variable is static, it means if you call some routine in here and it sets a value to these variables, that value will stay in the variables and it will hang around and be there the next time you call something. So we're setting it to nil. Now, all these routines, except for the first one, set up my data, are defined in the header file. And so the signatures for these are the same, except for that first routine we were looking at. And this means that these different items are available to the outside world, to something calling it. In our case, um, you saw it in my app delegate right here. So I'm calling this, I have some other methods I've exposed to the outside world. I'm using this one in the outside world here to pass in the word home. And then we go back here. So you'll notice, for example, my device type will return my device type. But the first thing I do is I check to see if the string is nil. If it is, I call set up my data. So it will set up the values the first time. It is using to build all this, it's using the value in UI device current device dot model. So we do a little checking to see if it's iPad or iPhone, whether it's the simulator or the actual device. And run mode, so my device type would return iPad or iPhone. And um, run mode would return simulator or actual device. And then here's that proper nib file name, um, which builds the file name based on what's passed in the base file name. So we're setting it to the base file name here and then we're concatenating my device type. So what that means is that this has added new functionality to the UI device class. As I'll just review again, um, in the app delegate we're using it, this new item here. The problem is it's not going to just work unless you put in import um, UI device my device type dot H in here. If you just go ahead and do that. But what if you're going to use this new functionality all over the place in your program? Well, instead of having to do this import at the top of every class where you're going to use it, you can do something else. And I'm going to show you that next. And what you can do is you can go into, hold on a second, let me see if I can find it quickly um, under other sources I have my universal app dot underscore prefix pch now you'll see this if def and if that's in there already you will find these first two lines are already in there so you would need to add this line here notice that because it's not a um, foundational kit, it's not um, a li normal library, you have to, instead of put it in brackets, you put the name of the file in quotes. And that's all you need to do, and it's, after you do this, it will be available everywhere in your project, just as if it were part of the original um, SDK. Um, so, there you go. Um, next tutorial, we're actually going to get into looking more at the universal app structure and how to put it all together. Thanks for listening.